So, we're now on to our next family. Again, one of my personal favourite families to have ever lived at the castle. The great de Beauchamp family, the saviours of Warwick Castle. They rebuilt this place, but better. But how the de Beauchamps got the castle in the first place is all thanks to the fact they're related to the Mordic family. William Mordic dies with no children, but luckily he has a number of nephews. And the best in line was a young nephew called William de Beauchamp. He becomes our new Earl, and the de Beauchamp family move in to effectively a ruined castle. But they also get the title Earl of Warwick, which by this point in time pretty much means absolutely nothing. It's not an important title anymore. What the de Beauchamps need to do is make that title significant. They must make a name for themselves. And they do. The de Beauchamps are famous here at Warwick Castle for a number of reasons, but mainly for being an amazing warrior family. The best place to become famous is the battlefield. And so the de Beauchamps take part in a large number of wars. For example, in the late 1200s, the de Beauchamp family take part in the Welsh Wars of Independence. The de Beauchamp family help take Wales in the name of the Kingdom of England. But they don't stop there. In the very early 1300s, they're now fighting in the Scottish Wars of Independence. The de Beauchamp family assist King Edward I in taking Stirling Castle in 1304. They're now becoming famous, they're becoming wealthy, but it's not enough. What they need is one massive war, and one comes their way. The longest war in the history of planet Earth. The Hundred Years' War against the French, which actually lasts for 116 years. Now, during this war, the de Beauchamps make a huge sum of money because they take part in a great number of battles and skirmishes, such as Cressy and Poitiers in the mid-1300s. They fight on past the Battle of Agincourt in 1415. All the while, the de Beauchamps would capture wealthy French knights and nobles, drag these men back to the castle, shove them in the jail and sell them back for a huge sum of money. And all that money the de Beauchamps got went towards building all the towers and walls you see today. Warwick Castle is now a trophy of war, showing the rest of the country how successful the de Beauchamps were. But that was still not enough. The de Beauchamps were always passionate about being the best noble family in England. And some would argue that they were. Because these days, the de Beauchamps are ranked at number 10 in Britain's wealthiest families to have ever lived in the country's past. In today's money, the de Beauchamps are worth £34 billion. That was their wealth by the 1420s, the height of their power. They owned more land, had more money, could raise a bigger army than the King of England himself. And that goes to show you. You may be the King of England, but you're not the most powerful man in the country. Power comes from land and it comes from money. And the de Beauchamps had enough of that. But still, they were always loyal to their king. But sadly, even their great line must come to an end. One of our last earls of the Beecham name, or de Beauchamp name, Richard, passes away by 1429. Richard dies with three children two daughters and a son. His son, Henry, is now classed as the 14th Earl of Warwick. But Henry de Beauchamp was an incredibly sickly boy. He dies at the young age of 21 in 1446. Henry dies with <coughs> only one child, a young girl called Anne. But she's far too young to get married. Now we play the waiting game. We must wait for Anne to come of age. But she never does. Poor Anne de Beauchamp would pass away 
at the age of six of unknown causes in 1449. All that power, all that money, the castle, the title,